an amazing show. Everyone is impressed. Everyone is coming to take your autograph. How do you feel? Um, I was horrible. Hate it. It's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't stand it. It's, just, it's so horrible having people sort of, you know, reinforce your ego all the time. It sucks. How many drinks do you need to get pissed? <laughs> um, not very many these days. When I was a student, I had to drink a lot to get drunk. These How old days, are you? I'm 28. I'm 28. So what brought you into this music? Um, drugs. <laughs> what age you were? Fucking hell. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, I heard my first drum and bass tune when I was 16 years old and it was Adam F Circles. And I wasn't on drugs at the time. Uh, so, yeah, but then, then through, through drum and bass I discovered all sorts of things, you know, like recreational substances and stuff like that. And, and then my mind opened and, um, and I put loads of music in it. Do you have imaginary friends? <laughs> yeah, this is Dave. You gotta shake his hand. He's got three hands. Save. Wait, no, that's not I his did hand. three that's of them. Hand. Hand there. No, I'm doing three of them. You do. Well, he's got three of them as well. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. When was your first gig ever? Um. My first gig was in a place called Cargo in London, and it lasted half an hour, and I got paid nothing. There you go. You are a potentially great artist. Although when I was 10, I was in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat in my synagogue production, which is... <laughs> so that was my first gig, it was big, massive. When did you start getting paid? Um, when did I start getting paid? I don't know. Early on, but I was getting paid fuck all. Can you and these days I get paid, but it all goes on other people's fees because I have a team of like like five people looking after my career which is mental so I'm earning about the same as I was there. Can you tell us about your beatboxing skill? Um, I learned beatboxing off of uh, an Inuit tribe when I was trekking out in the Arctic and they communicate with um, tonal singing which is and I learned how to beatbox from them and I was copying the expressions on the faces of elks and mooses and meeses, Reese's pieces, wearing fleeces because it was cold. You know what I mean? Like I like to be bold but I also like to welcome new people into the fold and make sure that when people are wrong I scold them sort of, you know, like what is your music background? My music background is massive. Um, I I was raised on a diet of cornmeal and oats in Pink Floyd's flight case because Pink Floyd only had one flight case so they put everything in it was this giant three-story high flight case and they used to carry it around by helicopter and I just used to hide in the back of their flight case just eating oats and cornmeal that were fed to me by their tour manager and even back then I knew that I wanted to get into arable farming and to go up to produce crops by organic means and so that's the reason why I started my company which enables non-governmental organizations to campaign for cleaner water, fresher sheep, cleaner towels, more alive, um, you know, not so kind of crystallized. It's all about the amorphous nature of reality. And that's what we try to focus on, but it's hard. But we do what we can. What is your biggest issue in your music career? My biggest issue with my music? He's like, this guy's a dickhead, stop it. He's fucking shit, he's waffling bollocks. He's not taking it seriously. Get him off the camera. We're not gonna show it anyway. Let's go be on the prodigy. My biggest achievement in my music career is this moment. I've made it.